Seven footers. <laughs> I got too excited because I, I haven't been here in a second. Okay. Gerard has been holding it down. Like I do, you know. Like you do. And while your girl's been all over the place. I think I said here, last week, I was like, I got a text from Jenna. It says, stuck in the Bronx. <laughs> terrifying <laughs> for all of you guys in the bronx i think i've been there probably that was like my third time i was there on for my other job on a shoot and it was wild <laughs> wild but you're back i'm back baby seven footers gang we are back the dynamic duo new year Yo, same us associations wildin it is wild and real hard right now. I mean, we need to talk about my guy. <laughs> Your man. My man, Kyrie Irving, return to the Brooklyn Nets after missing, what, seven weeks with a shoulder 26 injury. 26 games. Dang. Crazy. I mean, listen, they played the Utah Jazz after, what, the Nets were on a two-game winning streak. Well, they, they, they won, yeah, they won a two-game winning streak. And they then... got it shut down by the Jazz. <laughs> 118 to 107. I mean, Kyrie's 32 points, 11 assists, 5 rebounds wasn't enough to finish the job for the Nets. No. I mean, they didn't do too good from shooting from the field. Nope, nope, Utah nope. dominated Donovan oh Mitchell, my, my other guy. Donovan dominated Joe Showed Ingles, out. Rudy Gobert. Let's dissect Kyrie's return here, though. Like you said, we haven't seen him in 26 games, 7 weeks mm -hmm. due to a shoulder injury, which he's still dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. What were your thoughts? I know you were there. Yeah, so I, I was obviously there for uh, both games, the Atlanta Hawks game and the um, the Jazz game last mm -hmm. night. Look, Kyrie looks like Kyrie. I mean, he's averaging 26.5 points per game in the two games, seven assists, uh, 20, 22 of 30 from the field, he's shooting 70-something percent. I mean, he's, he's doing his thing. But the interesting thing is Kyrie and the Nets need Kyrie – to be the rising tide that lifts their ship, right? Like, that's yeah. who he needs to be. And the challenge with that is this team doesn't have continuity and familiarity with one another. Mm -hmm. So it's very hard for him to do that, right? So, because, you know, there's all this talk that happens around about, oh, our team's better with without Kyrie, blah, 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 blah. And, mm -hmm. like, oh, let's just refute that. They're not, right? This is an all-NBA player. A team is not better without him. The issue is, is that this current Nets team, they don't have a lot of on-court playing time together to be able to revert into, all right, ha uh, familiar habits and customs because they've only been playing together for literally less than a year and Kyrie missed 26 games. Amen. Not to mention Kyrie's also adjusting to this kind of three guard set mm -hmm. you got Dinwiddie mm -hmm. and Karis Levert. and mm -hmm. Karis Levert yeah so I think that also comes into play too I'm not saying there's too many cooks in the kitchen but it's it, what are I you mean, gonna do with es that essentially it is that and it isn't that one person's jocking the ball more than other because let me tell you I've I watched him closely in these two two these last two games he's not forcing anything he's not rushing he's not taking over he's working within the flow of the offense the problem is, look, let's just call it what it is. We always say there's levels to this in the NBA. Mm -hmm. Of the Nets players, KD notwithstanding because he's not playing, Kyrie is the most talented. Yeah. Then there is a drop-off to the next group of players. 100%. It's definitely a different level. And that, that is, is the challenge, on. right? He can work off of anybody because he's Kyrie Irving. The issue is the other guys and their ability to work around him. And those three guys that we just mentioned, Dinwiddie, Kyrie, and Levert, all excel with the ball in their hands. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't play basketball with three balls. We only play with one. Mm -hmm. So the other two have to figure it out. Now, here's the thing. Because Kyrie's so gifted, he could be the one to say, you know what? I can catch and shoot and, just, and work without the ball in my hands because he's talented enough. But the problem is, they do that, the Nets fall behind 10, 15, 20 points, and it's like, well, Kerry, you got to take the ball and score. It, right? It's a double-edged sword, so it really is in many ways on Levert and Dinwiddie and Kenny Atkinson to figure out what are ways in which we can get these guys to do things, right? Whether it be Karis Levert cutting off ball because he's super mm -hmm. bouncing and athletic, uh, Spencer Dinwiddie catching, shooting threes, whatever it may be. They're going to have to figure out some things 
and honestly, it isn't, you know, I'm not saying it in the way that, like, these guys don't fit. I'm saying it in the way of the injuries, and remember, Karis LeVert was also injured, was unfortunate for them because they don't have the time and the continuity to build the reps. Mm -hmm. And in the NBA, as you and I know, these teams don't practice because they're playing, you know, two you know, two games in four nights and two games in five nights. So there isn't a whole lot of practice time for these guys. Exactly. And I, I think, like you said, too, it's a combination of different things. They're getting used to each other on the floor. Kyrie just returns after a seven-week stint of injury. Karis LeVert just comes back. They're getting used to the excess of guards. Mm -hmm. And not mm -hmm. to mention, their defense hurt them last night against the Jazz. Mm -hmm. So did their outside shooting. Mm -hmm. They couldn't knock down threes. Yep, yep. Not to mention, Donovan Mitchell dominated. Yeah, so in the did fourth Joe quarter, Ingles, for sure. Yeah, Ru Gobert. Gobert. Yeah. Look, the, what you saw last night in that game was, we always say in this league, it's about talent, right? Talent mm -hmm. wins out. You saw players who have all NBA type of ability. Well, the Nets only had one of them last mm -hmm. night, right? And and the the Jazz had a couple, right? And and that is that is the difference. Yeah. Right? Is that the rest of those guys are going to have to lift and elevate their game, which by the way, they can do because we've seen them do it. Last year in the playoffs, you know, there were games where Karis LeVert was the best player on the floor. He was certainly the Nets best player. Yeah. Spencer Dinwiddie when Ky when Kyrie was out, was the Nets' best player leading all-star chance, right? Exactly. So they can do it. The issue is, can they do it cohesively and collectively? And the challenge that Kenny has is, yo, man, we're forty something games in. It ain't like like we. It ain't like it's October and we got mm -hmm. seventy more games to go. No, nah, dude. And they've also made it clear to the Nets that. Not as much, not that it's so much of a rest year or things like that, as bad as the Warriors, but they are taking their time. They're yeah, rehabbing yeah, yeah, slowly. Yeah. They're not really putting a lot of pressure on themselves. So with that being said, again, it's just growing pains. The better team last night won. Of course. With the domination of the offense and, of the and, Jazz. And, and let's be real, right? The Jazz won their 10th straight last night, 15 of the last 16. Exactly. They're the number two seed in the Western Conference. Look, Utah you is playing You knew what we were doing going into this. Lights out. And they're, mm -hmm. they are excellent. I mean – Reading some of this really quick, I mean, Donovan Mitchell put off 25 points. I mean, Joe Ingles, 27 points, went 10 for 14 from the field. I mean, Gobert, fantastic. He was Finished with 22 points, 18 rebounds, double-double. Monster. Double, 9 for 12 from the field. Look. They dominated last night. It, the, it is what it is. I will say this. As much as the Nets are thinking about, you know, next year's our year when KD comes back, it will be disappointing for this team not to make the playoffs this year. Absolutely. Not because Kyrie needs reps. He's played on the big stage. Karis and Spencer and the rest of these guys, they've only had one playoff experience in their lives. Exactly. Right? Last year, five-game loss uh, series loss to the Sixers. Another year of playoffs would be beneficial for this group. Mm -hmm. so Absolutely. So they want to make the playoffs and, you know, and hopefully be a little bit more competitive than they were last year. So, look, it's not, it's not doomsday. The Nets are, are happy to have Kyrie back. It's just going to be some growing pains, and unfortunately, they don't have the calendar on their side, right? This no. isn't October or November. We're already – guys, it's already mid-January. They're about to hit a tough, tough run right now. All-Star all week all – All-Stars in like three weeks, mm -hmm. right? Well, not quite three weeks. Mm, four weeks. Mm. We, right? All-Stars a month away. Which will we'll be there. We, we'll be there. Seven voters will be there. And remember, All-Star isn't the halfway point. All-Star is about the two-thirds point. After all stars, when you turn it up, because it's right. I mean, you got yeah, you got yeah. literally a month. You got a, a month left, and then it's it's go time. Mm -hmm. So those are all the things that they need to consider. And yes, as you mentioned, this is a tough part of their schedule. They played Utah last night. They're in Philly tonight on the second night of a back to back, which is always tough. They got Milwaukee coming in on Saturday, Philly again next week, and the Lakers on Thursday. Tough. So I'm you know. interested to see also too how this Kyrie Irving uh, injury unfolds. First, I'm not even joking. This is how the media has skipped and the reports and things like that last week we're talking about him potentially not returning at all this yeah, season yeah. then all uh, i said that yeah, yeah right then all of a sudden we get noticed that he's coming back and then last night in the post game he said he feels good this and that obviously you know you're gonna say that too but what's going on well, Jenna, what is the deal with this shoulder we, injury so he spoke to us to the media at, 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 yeah at, you were there we were there Tell at, us. At, at the brooklyn nets uh arena I guess it's like two weeks ago now on a Saturday. And remember, he hadn't talked since the injury. Yeah. So we were all like, oh, okay. And Kyrie said, remember those those dis disputes about whether it was bursitis? Kenny said no. Kyrie said yes. Had you considered surgery? The Nets were saying no. Kyrie said yes. You know, we talked about this on the last couple pods. But the reality is he had that cortisone shot on Christmas mm -hmm. Eve. And clearly the effects are working and he's feeling well. 
says he's good. But the problem with cortisone shots are they wear it off at some point. Yeah. Uh, it could be a month from now. It could be, uh, it's all different for each different for different players. Mm-hmm. What's going to happen when the cortisone shot wears off? Because he said he can't live on off cortisone shots. So I don't think he's going to be somewhere who's going to no. want to take another two or three more of these to, to get through the season. Mm. Right? So it'll be interesting, interesting to see how – it manifests itself as this goes on, and Kenny will monitor him. Look, he's going to play tonight in the second out of the back-to-back. His minutes will be monitored, though, yeah. Um, and as they should be, because look, you got to think in the long term. So this is all fascinating, and we'll see, we'll see where it all plays out. It's, <clears throat> it's definitely going to be tough for the Nets, though, going forward. That schedule is lethal. Mm-hmm. All right, let's move on. We got to talk about the trade deadline because <laughs> it's coming up quick, right yeah, before All Star, February sixth. Yeah. Yep. We already have rumors circulating, oh people God. potentially on the chopping block. Like, <laughs> <laughs> don't laugh at me. <laughs> like I said, okay, we have rumors circulating already. So, again, it's all rumors, hearsay, but we obviously have to talk about it because yeah, yeah. I want to hear your takes and where we think sure. people would fit in. I mean, the Sixers obviously need some shooters, but mm. we'll get to that right now. <laughs> so, the Sixers reportedly – Interested in Davis Burton's yeah, off yeah. the Wizards. Now, he's a pretty good outside Yo, shooter. Yo, Burton's has been killing it from three this year. Killing it and from three, putting up great numbers. Look, I think he'd be a great asset. The Wizards ain't good. So, the question poor is... Poor Bradley. The, uh, poor fr- free, free Bradley Beal. Poor Bradley. <laughs> and my br- new guy, Peyton. Yeah, listen. <laughs> listen, it's going to be a rough time there. Yeah. But And Bradley's locked in. Look. With that money, though, are, are they sell? Are they sellers? Are are the Wizards sellers? They should be. They're not very good. They, they, they have a new regime there. What's the plan? Exactly. I mean, I think we need to be in. What? Well, what do they want to get? What do they? What can they get back for Bertans from Philly? Does Philly have the draft capital? Well, right? I mean, because if I'm Washington, that's what I want. Because I'm trying to rebuild, right? Oh, Washington, hundred percent needs to rebuild. I need I need draft picks and I need young players under contract. Well. Who do the Sixers have that's younger under contract that they're willing to give up? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I was sitting here really you're, you're, trying you're, to you're think thinking, about it. You're like, okay. I'm like, they really don't have anyone to give up. Right? I mean, uh, unless you're talking about you're going to give up Ben Simmons, which you're not going to. But, Absolutely but that, But that is, they have, and they're not, I mean, Matisse Thibel. They love Thibel. I, I don't think they'd give him up. I, I wouldn't, personally. I don't know. I mean, but if you're looking for a shooter, if you really want to contend. And and that's what they're going to need. They're going to need. But look, it, the, Philly's, you know, we know what Philly's problems are, right? They, we talk about Ben Simmons all the time. I'm going to put that to the side. Let's not even go there. Philly is somewhat underachieving this regular season, but they're a team uniquely built for the playoffs. With all that I size. I love that. And all, I love how you said that. They yeah. are. That's, that's who they are. Listen, they can beat anybody in the playoffs that's how good they are i think miami's the one thing they probably don't want to see because miami just because of the jimmy butler thing and he's got you know jimmy got their kryptonite he's maybe. got something like <laughs> over know? them when he like but, walks out there he but the confidence. bucks they're not afraid of the bucks they no. got four dudes to throw at Giannis. Uh-uh. the celtics they ain't afraid of them either no size doesn't matter for them they so they again and those are the top teams so they're not they're not, they're not worried about toronto you know they can beat all those teams indiana so philly defensively, again, can do so many great things. But I think their ultimate issue is going to be they have enough shooting and enough spacing to That's win it all. Well, apparently they do have their eyes on David. And the thing is, the Wizards had pl- had plans to re-sign him. He's a free agent after this, but and so it, seven it, mil on the contract. And, and the big thing is with a lot of these rumors is who's a buyer, who's a seller, who has – and who – do you have the contracts to match? Yeah. Right? Like, people are like, all right, we got to get Chris Paul. And it's like, yo, but do you got salary to match? Exactly. And the thing is, we also have to remind the casual NBA fans mm-hmm. that with the rumor mill, like the rumor mill is in all news, you know, entertainment, everything. Right. When teams come out like this and things come out and say, we're interested in so-and-so. Right. Just going off what you said, yeah. just because they're interested doesn't mean they're anywhere near getting oh, this guy. Oh, God. And it's also teams just doing due diligence, yeah. right? So, like, the big rumor was the Knicks and Andre Drummond, right, from the Pistons. Yeah, and yeah. And everyone's going crazy. And it's like, look, first of all, we all know Drummond's going to opt out, right, and become a free agent in the summer. So why would you trade for him right now and give up draft capital and all other things when – to get the right to what? Resign him when he's a free agent again? Just wait till the summer. Particularly 
if you're a team like the Knicks who's going nowhere, what are you worried about? Sign him in the offseason. <laughs> He's going to be a free agent. No need, no need to give away stuff now. You know, he was saying, hey, what about the Hawks? Look, the Hawks are. That was, the t- that was thrown in there, yeah. The Hawks are the worst team in the league. You think? Yeah, they're, they're, you they're, think the worst? Record wise, they're one. Yeah, they're 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 one game behind the the Warriors. Them and the Warriors are the two worst teams in the league, record wise. Wow. Now the Hawks should be better. They're, yes. They've got a lot of talent, and you know I'm starting to wonder what's going on in Atlanta. Uh, their, their last game notwithstanding, because Trey and Kevin Herter and John Collins those guys balled out last game. But there's a lot of talent on that team, and shouts to Kevin Herter. We had our two good minutes with him last week. Yes. You know. I, that team is young and uber talented, and I just, I, I'm, I'm wondering, what's, what's it going to take, or what's, what's happening? going on? Mm-hmm. I'm just really, what is happening with them? Do you think anyone's getting booted? No, because um, head coach Lloyd Pierce, that's Travis Schlenk's the GM, that's his guy. They brought, they came in together from Golden State. So, but what worries me is how many times they get blown out, and like, and they're non-competitive. Mm-hmm. That's, a, and I know they're young, but look at what Memphis is doing. Like Me- very impressive. Memphis, I just got the chill. Real young. Yeah. Their two best guys are twenty. <laughs> twenty. Rough. Like I mean, so you know, so that's it's Atlanta. Because remember when we started the season, Atlanta was one of those teams where we're like, hey, they can make some noise. Like they ain't making the good kind of noise. We were impressed. I remember uh, they were one of my what's up yeah. with because they were and they to were be fair, looking good. John Collins had the twenty five game suspension, but still, PEDs. PEDs anyway, you. so you know, uh, Gallo is Gallo on the block in OKC. He's a someone, Danilo Gallinari, that teams can use a stretch four, yes. fill it up from three. Yes, I think it's more likely OKC moves him and not Chris Paul again because oh, of the, yeah, because of the contracts. They're not gonna right yeah. now. It's not the Gallo con- Gallo's contract small. I mean, he's making quite a bit, but, but I Chris think Chris Paul. But Chris Paul is a little bit harder to move, I think. Yeah, a little and, bit. And they love that three guard lineup with Shea and Chris. And you know what? And, and, Dare I and say? Schroeder. It's yeah. working. Uh, yeah, they're it's, good. It's working. They're really good. And I'm liking what I'm seeing out of Chris Paul. I mean, the gas that he's pulling out of that tank. Listen, he the o- OKC was in here in Brooklyn a couple nights ago, and down the stretch they had a lead. Chris Paul on three consecutive possessions. Got the mismatch you want on pick and roll. Got the 17-foot elbow jumper. Knocked it down every time. He must have had that arena rock. I mean, it was crazy. I was like, damn, he's so good. So like, good because he plays that old school ball. And he, you know, you think like already he's like he's getting older, but like he's still so smart and can and still. This oh, is yeah. what's sharp. He the can, mind. He can just get to his spot and it's, it's automatic. That's all, I mean, he, talk, he jokes about it. It's like a layup for him, mm-hmm. right? Because that, that is his spot on the floor. And, you know, the mid range, right? You know, we talk about threes and, and all that stuff. And yeah, we love them and they're important, but. If you're efficient in the mid-range, that is a high-quality shot, Amazing. right? And yes. Chris Paul is highly efficient in the mid-range. Absolutely. So, no, it, it's interesting. So, so Gallo's got a three-year, $64 million deal. So he's got about $21 million. So that's $21 million. That ain't cheap. No. So you're going to have to move, you know, probably send back two guys to match salary if you're going to trade. You know? mm-hmm. so, but he's someone that teams are going to be looking forward to add some shooting. No, absolutely. It, it'll be interesting. The other thing, too, about the trade deadline, you know, for some teams, it isn't so much about trade as much as it trades as much as it is, are they getting healthy? Because that's almost like a trade deadline move. We talked about it last week. Victor Oladipo, he's coming back on the 29th of January. Mm-hmm. That's like a trade deadline move, right? Yeah. They're not going to make any moves, but getting Oladipo back is like getting right. Oh look, heck look yeah! Look how good, it's a good Indiana's guess. been playing all year, mm-hmm. and now they get their All Star back now. It's going to be some growing pains like it is when you have to rework somebody and he's got to get accustomed to playing with Brogdon and all that. Yep. But that's a big win for them, right? Yusuf Nurkic might be back sometime soon for Portland. That's like a, a, a draft, dead, uh, yeah. a trade deadline piece. So Huge, huge move. These are things that are like that are similar to if you can't make trades. Because I'm going to be honest, like I don't know how much heavy trade action we're going to see just because these contracts are so big mm-hmm. and I don't know that teams have enough to move. Exactly. So, I mean, we always hear about surprises, though, at the last second. And then you have the desperation moves, oh, yeah. the let's, you know, oh, take yeah. a chance. And and what about Derrick Rose? Talk to me about Derrick Rose. I mean, well, that's the question, right? So Detroit had, I mean, Blake Griffin's head surgery, and there's no timetable set for his return. So they're pretty much done for the season. Mm-hmm. Derrick Rose is playing well. Where could he fit, possibly? 
Lakers. I was just going to say, Maybe. there's something on your <laughs> mind. Don't even tell me that, Gerard. I but, will but, lose but my But again, shit. here's the thing. Again, what are the are the Pistons selling, number one, two, yes. and what are the, what do the Lakers have to give that the Pistons want for Derrick Rose, right? Because they can they, they can play hardball and be like, well, we know this would help you okay, win, a cha- win a championship. What are you willing to give us for that, you know? Well, that's the thing, right? Like, now Jeannie Buss and Rob Palenka love Kyle Kuzma, so... Uh, he is a Laker. Like, he is a Laker. I mean, listen, we talked about this last week on the pod. You you know, I want to say it again. And I know you love Kuzma. And again, I, I want to be clear about this. I think he's a good player. But the way we talk about him, like he's an all-star. Yeah. He's not. Ooh. He ain't that. He's not an all-star. <laughs> Kyle Kuzma, you know, what, you know what team he's on? All drip, all cozy fan first team. That is Kyle Kuzma. That is who he is. Oh, my it's God. It's not shade. It's just... The it's, shade. It is his. It is his proliferation on social media, and he's everywhere, and he's got the bump because on the Lakers, he's always talked about. Kyle Kuzma is not an All Star, but we talk about him like he's an All Star. What about getting rid of the goat? And I don't mean LeBron. I mean LeBron has been calling <laughs> Alex Caruso. Oh my God, that's another crazy the one. goat. Oh, please, <laughs> Jesus Christmas. <laughs> Alex Caruso. Next. Oh, okay. Let's <laughs> we go. Out of here talking about Alex Caruso. Oh, <laughs> shit. I mean, it's just, look, it's. I don't want to sound old man, get off my lawn, like, but it's this thing where we're like. <laughs> no, I know what you mean. We're just hyping him up because it's just stop. Because it's funny. It's just. Funny. It's like let me, yeah, but yeah. But let's not let's not get it twisted, right? This dude ain't like. Come There's on. levels to this. Levels to as this. You said. Yeah. Levels, okay. <laughs> All right, let's talk about NBA All Star. Yeah, because as everybody's been voting since Christmas yeah. and it's been heating up, mm-hmm. we are gonna pick our selections, our starters, and our reserves, yeah. and then we have a little treat. Yeah, we do. I recently spoke with Gary Payton. Mm-hmm. Great guy. First time uh, former Sonics legend chat with him. Yes, mm-hmm. Sonics legend. Um, I mean. Defensive oh nightmare. Oh, the glove. Trash he's, talking. Oh, yeah, he's the man. Fiend. Uh, uh, you know, Gary Payton's a real one, right? Uh, he 90, is a real one. 96 NBA Finals, right? Sonics Bulls. Gary Payton jawing at Michael Jordan and not and got no back down in him. Mm-hmm. And that's what you got to love about a guy like Payton. Got, you have to. Got no back down. His son's taken after him, too, on the Wizards, just signed a guaranteed contract. And we're, and we're going to talk about um, a certain team and a player that's got no back down a little bit later in our What's Up With. That but, is right. Um, but go ahead. So, okay, so you let's start with the Western Conference. Okay. And you go with your starters. Do you want me in any way, shape, or form to break down... How it works? No, just pick your starters first, and then I'll and then I'll pick my starters. Okay, my Western Conference starters. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know how I get nervous uh, about my list. Yeah, I know, okay? I know, I know. Okay, Luca. Mm-hmm. James Harden. Yep, sounds easy enough. LeBron James. Mm-hmm. Anthony Davis. Mm-hmm. Kawhi Leonard. Okay. Uh, those are my West starters. Yeah. <laughs> I love when I get similar to you because I feel intelligent. <laughs> those are my West starters. Um. The only the only thing I think we could potentially quibble with is I I you could say because again let's for, for the people listening at home it's two backcourt players three front front court players yeah Th- there's a difference between that and all NBA which all NBA by the way is a higher designation but we'll get, we'll explain that at another time why that's different all NBA does two guards two forwards and a center mm-hmm. whereas All Star does two guards I'm sorry two backcourt players three front court players yeah. so you can in theory have three forwards and no centers. The only thing I can say we would we could quibble with is we could sub out as a starter. We could put Jokic in as one of the as one of the front court players and maybe move Kawhi to reserve. That, that, that's the only thing I would say we could do. Yeah. But otherwise, I didn't. But I didn't. You but could. That's, that's the only thing we could do. Yes. I think. But otherwise, I, I'm. Those are so we're good. Okay. All right. Now your reserves. My reserves. Oh God, this was a hard one. <laughs> I had a couple people that I was subbing in and out. Um. Okay. Oh, and let's let the people know you are. So it's five starters and seven reserves. Seven. Yep. And for the reserves, we just did it. Whatever seven we liked. Like, oh yeah. So I didn't really go. Sometimes it like some coaches do like. Three, four, and the front court, back courts, and five, two. Look, I just picked the seven people I think deserve. So anyway, go. Okay. Uh, gosh, I get so nervous. <laughs> Paul George, mm-hmm. Russell Westbrook, mm-hmm. Carl Anthony Towns, mm-hmm. Nikola mm-hmm. Jokic. Mm-hmm. Yes, Donovan Mitchell, mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. course. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Damian Lillard, mm-hmm. 
Lou Williams. Okay. Wow. Lou Williams getting some all-star love. I gave him some all-star love because I think he deserves it. I did have Devin Booker. I did. Okay. But? But I don't know. You want you want to reward winning. I, listen, <sighs> it's, that's okay. I know. It's just so hard. So the, the reserves are tough, right? So here, here go my reserves. Tell me and, and this is always where we have room for discussion. Yes. Uh, Jokic, obviously. PG-13. I went Chris Paul over Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook is not an all-star for me this year. Sorry. He just isn't. Okay. Damian okay. Lillard. I'm not mad. Donovan Mitchell. Rudy Gobert. Let me just say something about Rudy right now. Rudy has been a two-time defensive player of the year and has been an all-NBA. All-NBA, which is a better and more important designation than all-star. Twice, but hasn't made all-star once. That's insane. How does that work? That's Two-time insane. defensive player of the year, two-time all-NBA, but you haven't made all-star. You know what, though? Let's also remind the kids at home that this is also part of fan voting. Well, you know so how I feel about that. It's a popularity <laughs> contest in some capacity. I mean, what about um we get some of the players that what was it? Uh, I think what was LeBron had a groin injury that yeah, he sat yeah, out for a ton yeah, of time yeah. and he was still oh, yeah. number one. Well, like look, you're just gonna Ka- get Kyrie LeBron. missed thirty games and he's still the number one vote getter in the Eastern Conference. Exactly. On the, on the guard, so. exactly. So it is a popularity contest somewhat. So Rudy Gobert and then my last one, I went with Devin Booker. Thank God I, somebody did. I, I gave it to Book. Now, by the way, I wanted to, if you want to tell me you want Brandon Ingram over Book, I want to argue with you. Um, I took Gobert over Towns because I think Gobert's play leads to winning more so than Towns' numbers, right? Like, I, I'm, Towns puts up numbers, but the Timberwolves aren't winning. I don't want to argue that. Right? Gobert puts up numbers, and they win. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's also part of Donovan Mitchell, but number two seed in the West, I think, should get two All Stars. So again, to recap: Jokic, PG thirteen, Chris Paul, Damian Lillard, Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert, Devin Booker. No Russell Westbrook. Again, if you want to tell me Brandon Ingram, I'll go with that um, over over Booker. I can do that, and I went with um, Gobert over Carl Anthony Towns. Okay, now that we went through the West really quick, mm-hmm. are there any players that you personally think? Will probably get snubbed. That should be on there. Booker's probably gonna get snubbed. Okay. I think, because the, Phoenix isn't winning enough. Yeah. But I don't think. But hit, that's the argument about All Star. I don't think them not winning. I know I just said Carl puts up numbers and they don't win. I don't think Phoenix not winning is about Devin Booker though, right? Like that. Okay. That. Yeah. And and they they're actually starting to come back around again. So. I think, and and Booker's been out there, he's been durable. Like, I just think he's been an excellent player. Look, yeah. you want to tell me Towns because of the numbers? I, I I can't disagree with the stats, but. Yeah. No, you got you choose who you choose and you have your reasons. And Lillard, you know, Lillard's been an all-star. Obviously, Portland's underachieving, um, but it isn't because of Damian Lillard. And look, Russell Westbrook just hasn't been playing well this year. Like, I don't, I'm sorry. Like, I don't really know what else to say about that. Every, shootings down, like everything is just not good. Mm-hmm. And I know he's been a perennial All Star, but look. I, so if someone says how you got Booker on there, but not Russell Westbrook, I, okay, but I'll take Brandon Ingram over over Russell Westbrook right now. And yeah, a lot of people do base this differently. I personally think it is more of the, and we'll get to this in the Eastern Conference, but. Like, people say Trey Young. Oh, why is he an all-star? The Hawks suck. But it's not about the Hawks. Right, right, right. It's about the individual player. And look, and part of it is, and we just talked about it, this is a fan thing and a popularity thing. Yeah. Which is why, for me, ultimately, I'm happy to pick this, but all NBA is what matters to me, right? I know like, it does. At, at the end of the year, like, oh, it's who makes mm-hmm. all NBA. That yeah. That's what matters because I got you. when I, you know, when you do the whole, like, you know, greats of all time, it's like, you know, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, 15-time all NBA. Like, that's like... Goats do that stuff. Tim Duncan, like that. Mm-hmm. When you're in the double digits, all NBA, like, I mean, and for the fans at home, again, you make all NBA. You are literally one of the 15 best players in the league, and to essentially make all NBA all of your career, good lord, that means literally since you came into the league, you've been one of the best players. That is incredible. Yes. So to me, couldn't agree more. All NBA, because again, also takes a fan account, and again, I'm not like knocking fans, but. Fans do silly things because they just like, you know, they want to troll or they just like their guy. And it's like, you know, and it's fine. I get it. This is a game for the fans. So, you know. I hear you. Yeah. All right. Eastern Conference yep. starters. starters. Yep. I am going to. I, I think we'll probably have the same. Oh, we might not, but go ahead. We, I don't know. This okay. is a little tricky for me. Okay. Giannis, obviously. obviously. Joel Embiid, mm-hmm. obviously. Mm-hmm. I have Trey Young. Mm-hmm. 
I do have Ben Simmons. Interesting. As a starter. Wow. <sighs> it wasn't easy <laughs> for me. <laughs> um, and I have Pascal Siakam. Okay, here go my starters. Giannis Embiid, Siakam. So we agree on those. Okay. I have Trey Young as well. Look, Trey has oh been. Oh my gosh, my heart, Trey guys! I have been <laughs> trying to get Gerard on the Trey train. Listen, listen, forever. I, so let, let let me let's rewire for the fans. I did go on television and say I thought Trey Young had high bust potential. I said it. I admit that. I Thank said that. Thank you. I can I go to bed had, tonight. I didn't like say he would be a bust. I just said I thought he had high you, bust yeah, potential. You, I, I I get it. And what I didn't see was his passing is next level. Like his court vision is way better than I thought it was. So everybody was telling me, oh, but Gerard, he led the nation in assists in Oklahoma. I'm like, listen, Russell Westbrook has led the NBA in assists, and I would not call him a transcendent passer, right? Like that. <laughs> the ca- like counting stats don't tell me if someone's got good court vision, and but mm-hmm. Trey Young is excellent at that, mm-hmm. and the shooting. Ever since that, that sort of lull he had when he uh, came in the league as a rookie, incredible. Look, Trey's yeah. awesome. Mea culpa, like, uh, one of my favorite players to watch on League Pass. And I kind of made the switch to transition last year. Now, I did say that Luke is better than him, and uh, that's still, yes, you know, you did. that still holds true. Yes, you did. Luke um, is your guy. Well, and you know, you know who my real guy from that draft is, but we, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that later. Anyway, and um, so Trey Young, so, yeah, I'm with you on that. And my second guard, I went Kemba Walker. Now Kyrie, I know is the, the vo- he's he's the he's the le- the number two. Oh my god, I forgot him. He's the number two vote getter. So again, if you if you just go by the the votes like that, he you know a lot of people think he might make it. The, my problem is Kyrie missed twenty six games, like how, you know yeah. how you can be an all star when you missed pretty much the whole half of the <laughs> half of the first half, right? Facts. More than half, almost almost sixty percent of the first half. So no, for real. All right, reserves. Go ahead. Reserves were tough. So tough. Oh, okay. Um. Wow. All right. Bradley Beal. Mm-hmm. Chris Middleton. Wow. Okay. Zach Levine. Wow. Okay. The hometown kid, or, or not? He's not from Chicago, but the game was be in Chicago, and he's a Chicago Bull. So okay, makes sense. Jimmy Butler. Mm-hmm. Andre Drummond. Wow. Okay. Kemba Walker. Yep. And I have my last spot as Kyrie or Spencer. So you, 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 we're so similar that way. Okay. So I basically, <sighs> we said five starters, seven reserve. So I actually have eight reserves, and here is why. I have eight because I right. don't know what to well, do. Well, because the, the Nets aren't going to get two All-Stars. No. They're not good enough. No. So in my reserves, I have, it's either if Kyrie doesn't make it as a starter, I know I picked them as a starter. It's either Kyrie or Spencer. So one of those two is going to make it from the Nets. And that's it. And that's yeah. the only net player going. Okay, the rest of my reserves. Jimmy Butler. Bam Adebayo. Nice choice. My guy, DeMontis Sabonis from Indiana. Bradley Beal. Ben Simmons. And Celtics are good. Jalen Brown. I went Jalen over Tatum. Yeah. I did it. I went Jalen over Tatum. I think Jalen's been – Tatum's counting stats are slightly better. But if you watch the games, I think Jalen Brown has been the better and more consistent player and the more deserving all-star I, I of the two of them. I think I agree with that. I really do. Wow. That was fun. I want to relive it like every second of the day. I know. It's crazy, right? And again, with this all-star stuff, like it's – you know – it's going to be interesting because these reserves are hard. The reserves are soft. The reserves are the hardest part. The reserves are extremely hard. I mean, honestly, hard. I know I got two guys in the heat going. It could be very likely that only Jimmy makes it. You know, exactly. It's, it's difficult. And Simmons and Embiid. You know, and you know, I got I got Demonte Sabonis. I got Bradley. Bradley Beal's on a bad team, but like Bradley, but he is Bradley's tearing balling. it up. So you know, it, it's all it's all interesting. But I think Giannis and Embiid, Siakam, Trey Young. I think those four locks to me. As starters. Yes. I mean, we will see. It's 50% fan vote, 25% media, yep. 25% player yep. vote. Yep, yep. So majority, if not all, it's a popularity contest. It is, yeah. In my yep. opinion. Yep. But that's what makes it fun. All-star needs to be appealing. It needs yep. to have big names, big faces. Yeah, we got we to gotta get fans to show up. And, and I, I see that's why you have Zach Levine, right? The hometown, the Chicago Bulls player going. I mean, I, I get yep. it. Listen, yep. uh, somebody, someone told me this the other night in the media room at, at, at the Nets game, like, hey, man, Zach Levine is an all-star. And I was like, are you kidding me, Zach Levine? 
you know, I get it though. All right, we're gonna play. Uh, we're gonna play some sound from that interview that Jenna had with the legendary Gary Payton, and here it is. Definitely, the up and comers that I think a lot of people have different arguments about as to whether or not they should be an All Star, and I think a lot of people confuse the definition of an NBA All Star just because of a uh, good player on a losing team. But that doesn't mean anything because I feel as though, in my opinion, it is, like you said, the individual player and what they're doing on the court. Right. And, and, and you have to understand, if you look at Luca, he's doing a great job with a team that wasn't expecting it. But as he plays well, he has a group around him that is responding. As if you look at Trey Young, he doesn't have as much talent that Dallas has. He just mm-hmm. has Collins. And then he has the, he has a young he has a young kid uh, that just came out of Virginia. Uh, I forget his name right now. But they are up and coming. Now, if they make a trade, which they've been talking about with Andre Drummond, that will mm-hmm. change a lot of things in, 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 um, in their uh, future. But I don't punish him because he's on a bad team. Please don't mm-hmm. punish him. Because the things that he did, last night he was the first in the history of him and him and uh, 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 James Harden to score 40 points and get a 40-point triple-double and both in one game in the same game. So that's amazing for a kid kid that can do that. And he can shoot the basketball the way he does. He he went around his back. The boy thought he was going to throw it around the back pass. He went between his legs and psyched out Porter Jr. for for Denver the other night. He makes a good play. Luca is the same way. He, He makes big plays. And don't punish these guys because they're on bad teams. They didn't choose to be on bad teams. Their organization, exactly. their organization made them bad teams. So <laughs> if you want to get them better, get better players with them. I completely agree, for real. And uh-huh. even Trey Young, too. Um, I even spoke to a lot of people when he was first drafted, and – I think, like, people were saying, you know, he had a high, quote-unquote, plus potential and everything, and he completely turned that around. I mean, his range from deep at his size is incredible in its own, too. Well, well, we've seen that in college. Everybody didn't think he was going to do it in college because they thought he was too small. But what mm-hmm. he did was he came with a lot of heart, and he proved that he can do that. But what people don't understand, this NBA is built for him. It's a wide-open mm-hmm. NBA. So it wasn't, it's not like an NBA where they're rough and tough and they're beating up on people and it's ISO. You see now it's down zones. Mm-hmm. It's now a lot of hell. It's one-on-one basketball. When you put a guy like him on a big man and you ISO and he can run all the way back to the, to the, uh, to the half-court line and then attack that big man without nobody helping, that's that just living, living dangerous. And that's mm-hmm. what this NBA is about. You see all the guards. Every time they, they get ISO on somebody, what do they do? They back the ball all the way up to the half-court line and, and go straight out. You know what I'm saying? Without no help. So this is built for him, and, and that's why he's been so successful. I love that you say that and how you describe that. And speaking of the NBA as a whole, can you talk to me a little bit about, I mean, its current state? I mean, when you played, it was more of, you know, it was more of tough ball, banging you up in the paint, a lot of trash talk. Not that it's not trash talk now, but it was a little, people like to compare, you know, different eras. Can you talk to me about your thoughts about the current state of the league and where do you think it's at? Well, this era is about this era. Well, who, who looks at more of these basketball games nowadays? Younger kids. Mm-hmm. That's what's happening. Young kids and middle aged kids. And what do all these kids do? They play PlayStation. So mm-hmm. a lot of these players here play like PlayStation. Why do you think Stephen Curry got so got so popular? Because he plays like PlayStation. He yeah. goes to the games and he makes big shots like that and they play like that on that PlayStation and they do all of that. You know what I'm saying? And then music then got a part of this. The culture has become a part of the rap and all that music and stuff and the clothing. You see all the different crazy clothing styles that goes on now. Mm-hmm. These kids like seeing things like that. So then they can go and imitate it, and then they can go and, and wear that type of stuff. That's why you see the Westbrooks, the Hardens, when they come in here wearing that stuff, it's a trend for them now. It's a trend mm-hmm. for them. And, and it's an open game. Now it's now, now what is the weapon? The weapon is the three-point line. And when mm-hmm. we were playing, what was the weapon? The big man. The 
Because yes. when Duncan didn't there to the big man, if you didn't stop Shaq, you didn't stop the Dream, you didn't stop David Robinson, or you didn't stop Patrick Ewan, you would get killed. And when he mm-hmm. get double and, and mess up the defense, what would he do? He'd kick it out there and we'd make a tough shot. And mm-hmm. it's not like that no more. It's wide open. And that's what they're doing right now. Instead of on a fast break, you want a three-on-one fast break. Where do all the players run to? They run to the three-point line. They don't try to get a jump uh, layup. They don't do that anymore. With us, we would have did that. And especially if we had a guy like we were playing like a Trey Young or we were playing like a James Harden. If they come to the bucket, we're going to put them on their back. Mm-hmm. And we're going to make sure that they understand that we're going to hurt you if you come in here one more time. We got six fouls and we're going to try to kill you. And that's just the way it was. Nowadays, you go to the bucket, you get dunked on, everybody is oohing and aahing, and they put it on the Instagram, you see this dunk, you see that dunk. <laughs> they don't care about getting dunked on no more. So it's all about this Instagram stuff and how many likes you can get out of it. So it's their era. We can't be mad at that because we didn't play in his era, they didn't play in our era. Live the, the, the best you can in your era. You, use it as much as possible. And we can't do nothing about it. But the NBA is more world, not worldwide now. You know, we were just starting off the NBA overseas and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. We didn't have all of that. So, you know what I'm saying? And over in China and over in other places, they got this Instagram and Twitter stuff. That's how they keep it afloat with us. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And here, plus, Adam Silver has taken all these games over there to see us, see all these players more now. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. it's it's a big difference. I remember in 94 when we went to Hong Kong. Or um, Seattle and Houston were the first team to play over there. We mm-hmm. were the first team to go over there and play over there. We started that 20-something years, 25 years ago. So, you know, that it, it's just a, a different thing. We started that over 25, 26 years ago. And now it's worldwide where we're doing everything on our, in the preseason we're going to every city in the almost the world, and they're and they're loving it, and they're selling out, and that's just what this era is about. And that was the legendary Gary Payton. First of all. Did you use me in an interview and say some people said Trey Young had high bust potential? You think I catch that, did you? <laughs> I didn't think you were gonna play that part of the interview, to be honest. <laughs> but I got a little nervous when it was coming, and then I was like, "Ha ha!" I hope he laughs. <laughs> you were definitely the catalyst for me mentioning that. Yeah, no doubt. No but doubt. I did hear it from other people, but you were you were my catalyst. I, I, was, I, I, was, I was beating the drum pretty hard on that. You, Listen, you inspired me. May I help, but man, I, I can admit when I'm wrong. Listen, Gary's so funny because he kind of sounds like old man, get off my lawn a little bit, oh right? Oh my gosh, like, it's <laughs> but, comical. But it's so hysterical. funny, and I think what we're gonna do, folks, is we're gonna put up that full interview as a bonus uh, podcast episode, so you guys can listen to that in its entirety because there's some good stuff in there, and Gary's Gary's hilarious, and he's he's an NBA legend, and he also um. Just to tease it really quick, mm-hmm. he also talks about his involvement um, with the NBA within trying to hopefully bring back the Sonics. Yeah, bring basketball back to Seattle. Um, yeah, and yeah. he says in the interview, uh, I won't give it all away, but he expresses how much it would mean to him yeah. for them to come back, but to see his jersey. Oh, in yeah, the retired for sure. Up there. He's a Hall of Famer, no doubt. Not a possibility right now. No so doubt. No it doubt. was definitely some good stuff in there. Excellent work by you. Thank you. Yours is coming up, though. Well, first we got America's favorite segment. Yes. <laughs> what is up with? <laughs> so you, you kick us off. We're only going to do one, one each this one today. One each, yes. Uh, mine's quite obvious, but I can't not because I feel like this is somebody we, I guess, have been surprised with. I mean, you could probably guess what is up with John ja Moran. <laughs> are you like are, this- we like, are we in sync? <gasps> Stop it. Well, it, mine isn't specifically job, but continue. I can see, and I'm not even saying this is an early assessment of him. Mm-hmm. I can see this kid going on to be an MVP of the league. I mean, Jason I McGrady can said see that. him <laughs> being, really? Jason McGrady said that. Oh, my God, I didn't see that. 
Yeah, on the late. jump. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, three o'clock the jump. Missed it today though. <laughs> um, I could see him being an MVP. If not, I could see him leading, definitely in scoring, assists, anything, breaking records. I think he's an offensive juggernaut and. His attitude says a lot. Even after we saw him dunk right on Harden, mm-hmm. he I, I believe it was some explicit uh, that he um, said. So, and this is interesting because I my what's up with, and I I, I think they've been a couple times on what's up with. It might have even been last mm-hmm. week. My thing is what's up with the Memphis Grizzlies as a <laughs> whole, right? Like 19 and 22. Mm-hmm. So, you know, still under 500, but winners of, six, of, their, of their last six, eight of their last ten, and they're in the eighth seed right now. No if the playoffs were to start thought. today, they are in the playoffs. Their two best players, which I mentioned earlier, are 20 years old. And who else is on that team? Oh, uh, a player by the name of Jaron Jackson Jr. I might have mentioned him once or Triple J. 100, 100 times. Your guy. <laughs> My guy, Triple J. Uh, Triple J, by the way, uh, averaging 19 points, five rebounds, two blocks, 42% from three. So happy for him. John Morant, 17, 8, and 4. 43% from three. And John Morant, let's just call it now, is your runaway rookie of the year. Yes. Runaway. Yes. I Thank mean, yes, you. We, we, we know Zion hasn't played yet, but he, Zion's going to have to come back and average 40 points a game. Put some respect of the year. on Ja's it, name. It, it, it is John Morant. But th- that game you were referring to, the the Grizzlies played, played the Rockets on Tuesday night. They yes. won that game. In that game, John Morant pulled a step back three Ooh, on James Harden. It was nasty. And he said, he yelled, and I quote, tell that mf about me. <laughs> That's right, because Jaw has said numerous times before that people have slept on him. Nobody thought he could do it. Nobody thought this and that. He's this tiny kid. Shooting, that was a worry. We're like, is he able to shoot in the NBA? As yeah. I said, he's shooting 43% from and three. That is elite, by the way, if you don't know. (laughs) Absolutely. And everybody who is listening, please go do yourself a favor and go back and check out that specific moment Draw just talked about where he does the the step back, the ball handling, the step back oh, is he's, flawless. He's incredible. He doesn't look like a first year player. He's got hops with he, that move. And he's got moxie and a confidence that it's so we talked about Gary Payton. Gary Payton loves John Morant. Oh. That is his kind of guy. Yep, yep. Out here talking his talk and backing it up. And the big thing is he got no back down, right? James Harden is a league MVP, all NBA, pretty like you know, John Morant's like and like, and uh, show him right. who I he, am. He, he, like, Step back. Tell that mf for about me. Pull right. up from three. Yeah. Sink it. And, you know, listen, everyone in the NBA can play, right? We talk about that. But your mindset is what separates a lot of people, right? And he's got the mindset to believe. Keep it, I belong on this stage. You know who Ja Morant reminds me of? Who? And I'm not, I'm not comparing games because we don't like that on right. here. We don't like comparing people, especially young guys who are still developing. His... I will say, though, his mentality and his confidence and the way he carries himself, he reminds me of a mini Jimmy Butler. Yeah, I can, I can see that. See, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, like, yeah, tell yeah. that MF for my right. name. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. hundred like, percent. Just supremely confident in his skills and his ability. Which is so important as a young player, first year, second but year. But also in the work he's put in, mm-hmm. right? Now, the, what's going to be interesting to see is, can these young Grizzlies keep it up, uh-huh. right? Are they going to be able to, like, and John Moran, like, every rookie, for the most part, does it. Is he going to hit that rookie wall, right? This is the most basketball he's played in his entire life. You go from college, you're playing 30-something games, NBA is mm-hmm. 82, yeah. right? This is about the time where they start feeling like, whoo, man, yep. you know? Yep. They start feeling it. So it'll be interesting to see how they're able to manage and function. Again, I, I love this Grizzlies team. Brandon Clark, I mean, they got some veterans on there. Listen. They're, they're an, fun. They're an interesting trade piece, trade team, right? Because the thing is, they might be a little bit ahead of schedule. They have that Andre Iguodala trade piece. Andre Iguodala can be valuable to a lot of teams. 100%. Could Andre Iguodala go to a team like, I don't know, the Denver Nuggets? And who would the Nuggets give back in return? Mm, I don't know. Maybe Malik Beasley? Uh, There's a few pieces that they, they could they, give they back. They have some talent. And you get a, another young player back. And if you get a young player back from... The, the Nuggets, well, now they're all on the same timetable as Ja and Triple J. You have the core now of a young team, and it's like, hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, hey. Look out. I like these moves. I so like it, the so, moves. So it'll be interesting. And, you know, look, Jay Crowder is on that team, on the Grizzlies, and he provides veteran leadership. Tough. But I wonder, again, if you make that move, right, 
well, then you can then maybe move Crowder. But, you know, if you move Crowder, what can you get back for that? More draft capital, possibly. Who knows? So my, my point being is that this Memphis Grizzlies team is interesting and exciting. Um, and they Wild are, card a bit. They are. Listen, they were a league pass team for me. We did our early, and they're, st- they're still a league pass team. So I love it. Excited for what they're doing. Love it. So now we are going to bring up America's, I don't know, which which segment is this for America? I really like this segment. Um, you've really owned this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And made it your America's own. America's number two, number two favorite segment. Well, it's not just mine. I no, mean, no, 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 but I mean, you've too. really launched this for us. Yeah, and yeah. you really, you really, like, kept us in the know here. So I like the two quick minutes. So we have two quick minutes coming up right now with Toronto Raptors forward. OG Ananobi. So obviously, as a pro athlete, you know injuries are just part of the deal. But what is it like, though, when you're on a team and literally it's like, so like every other day somebody's going down and it's something you guys got to deal with? Uh, yeah, just something to do with, you know, talking to them sometimes. You know, it could be worse. <laughs> it could always be worse. Um, so as a young player in the league, what's sort of the biggest challenge Every year, so kind of into the more and season. more. Uh, so the you know, um, trainers pull me back a little bit, and I'm trying to find that challenge. Kind of back Just adjusting to like what's going on around you, because never yeah. every year is different. Sometimes changes every year. You know, no, um, no, team hasn't changed. Coaches haven't changed. Guys, the playing season yeah. hasn't changed. Yeah. Yeah. So just yeah. being able to adjust on the fly. Not yet. Not yet. Not being stuck in one year. Be ready to move on. But as an athlete. And maybe you don't, but you guys kind of like your creatures of habits, right? You like stability and things sort of being the same way. And for you last year, it was a tough year personally, away from the court. What did you learn about yourself and your ability to sort of come back and bounce back? Just resiliency. Always keep going. And fun stuff. Uh, what are your favorite shoes to wear non non I mean, they could be basketball shoes, but you don't wear them to hoop and you just wear them out. I was Air Max or something. Okay. Air Max. All right, Air Max. You're making kind of a, somewhat of a comeback right now. Mm, them, of course, is... Okay. Mm. Uh, Jordan? I mean, I did end up... Ones. Of okay. course. Okay. That's really it. And music-wise, what's what's in your in your Spotify or Apple or whatever you list, whatever your platform is? Travis Scott, Future, Club Riccardi. Roddy Ridge. <laughs> I mean, those are the main guys. Gunna, Gunna, Lil Baby. Okay, okay. And coming off last year at winning the championship, right? That is, that's the pinnacle for an NBA player and the team. Where do you guys go from here? Oh, uh, just keep trying to do it again. Yeah. And be sort of, you know, it, keep it rolling. Like a lot of people didn't think you would be like this with Kawhi leaving and everything, but you guys are pretty much maintained to be able to sort of still be one of the top teams and still battle despite the injury. The injuries, what does that say about just the collective and the group? Yeah, the resilient group. Um, yeah, I've been through a lot like last year, whole team, so we've seen it all. <laughs> You're battle tested now. Yeah. All right, man. That is Raptors forward, OG Ananobi. And again, the Raptors are surprising a lot of people better than a lot of people's expectations. Not mine. I, I had them in the playoffs. Yes. Siakam made another leap this year. Um, he had <laughs> battling some injuries. He's back. And that's the thing that obviously we talked to OG about was this, the injuries, right? And and he had a rough year last year personally away from the court, dealt with deaths in the family and stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, th- this is about resiliency, right? As he said, the ability to come back, bounce back, and just grind mm-hmm. and, you know, just really – push and work on your craft to just consistently get better and improve as a player and as an individual. And, uh, yeah, OG's, OG's one of my favorites in the league. So shouts to uh, Toronto Raptors forward OG Ananobi. Yes, and that was two quick mm-hmm. minutes with the seven-footers. <laughs> Can't wait to bring that back. Now, as we wrap things up, let's talk about some quick hits yep. here. We have an exciting announcement, okay? (laughs) Zion Williamson will be back for his NBA debut on January 22nd at home against the San Antonio Antonio Spurs, Mm -hmm. okay? Pelicans basketball operations, David Griffin, Mm -hmm. said it's been a process through Mm -hmm. his recovery, Mm -hmm. But they've gotten to know him better. They really like him. They think he's ready. They feel confident. And 
His official debut will be January 22nd. Yeah, and this is good for obviously the Pelicans of the league. Everyone's going to get excited about seeing Zion play. Um, they're going to be cautious with him and just watch how he's moving and mm -hmm. what's going on with those joints and all the torque that he, exp that he um, puts on his body. But yeah, they're gonna if he's healthy, they're going to play him and they want to see how he does. And look, listen, that eight seed in the West, we said the Grizzlies are there. It's kind of open, right? San Antonio's behind them. Portland's behind them. Listen, New Orleans goes on a little run here. Who knows? So wide open. So shouts to uh, Zion, New Orleans. Looking forward to seeing him make his NBA regular Absolutely. season debut. Absolutely. Quick shouts to uh, Zoe, too, who's yeah. been balling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? All right, next one here. We have some good news for the Warriors. Not too good, so don't get excited that much. <laughs> Steph Curry is back and traveling with the Warriors for the first time since breaking his hand. He is moving along with them. We also got an update. Clay's rehabbing. Yep, Despite yep. us not seeing him, he promises he's working. Steph, Steph Curry's been shooting as well. We've seen it. Yep, yep. Um. Look, uh, again, for the Warriors, this is their gap year, quote-unquote, right? Like, uh -huh. I don't know how many minutes they're going to play him, play Curry when they get back. And, look, a lot of people are saying they want to get the draft picks, right? That's that's what they want. And so, Curry, and Cur look, Curry's a baller and he wants to play. Um, but, you know, the hole they've dug themselves into, they're not going to come out of that and make any kind of run towards the playoffs. Yeah. Um, no. So, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if the Warriors just sort of, yeah, he plays, but it's, you know, they sit them some games, they, you know, yeah. just to, and overall maintenance and health and get themselves geared up for next season. Absolutely. They're definitely going to come back with a chip on their shoulder. Oh, for no doubt. Sure. No doubt. Yes. Okay. Well, that pretty much ends us here that for today. That wraps it. That is it. Remember, guys, rate, review, subscribe, Download check us out. Download all that. We are on YouTube, Apple, Spotify. What else are we on? Uh, Instagram at Seven Footers Podcast, the Twitter. Seven. Yep, yes. we are at JS Hector at Jenna Lemon Selly. Please, guys, get in touch with us. Contact, do all that. Shouts to CLNS Media, where you can also find our podcast. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, guys, for rocking with us, and let's have a good 2020 together. We'll see you next week. Peace. We'll drop the music in after. Oh. Yay! That was Yay. A good pod. Ooh. Love that all-star selection. The reserves were so, so hard. hard. I know reserves were. So